your mother grew up in Nazi occupied Europe. How did that affect her uh, as an adult, having had that formative experience <clears throat> as a child? So she was born in Brussels. Her parents were living there. Then her father left and she went for 18 months to England to boarding school to perfect her English. And during that time, the war broke out and her mother relocated to Holland because like Switzerland, at the time Holland and still is today a neutral country. And so they thought, you know, safer to be there than thinking that Hitler would somehow respect all of that, which of course he didn't, he marched in and, and they said, oh my God, you know, so they were not, there was no fighting because they did not expect an invasion because they were a neutral country. Um, and they thought it would last a few weeks, as she said, and it went on forever. But I think the loss of her father living in occupied, the longest occupied country of the Second World War, with the famous, you know, Dutch winter hunger and all of those trimmings, um, <clears throat> certainly planted some pretty powerful seeds for the work she did later on as a UNICEF ambassador uh, you know, in the last five years of her life, which she referred to as her second and most important career. So I think there she, she experienced the loss of everything you and I take for granted, um, you know, alongside with something that she talked a lot about, wasn't just the hunger of the body, malnutritional, but the hunger of the soul, you know. It is said in the film that you were saying that the best kept secret about her is that she was sad. But this is something that I sort of launched in my previous and only other book, uh, Elegant Spirit, you know. Um, she always used to say, I'm not gonna write a biography because I had a boring life. You know, I got up early and I got that set on time. I was nice to the crew. You know, there's no skeletons in the closets. They're offering me these millions to write a biography. I'm gonna take the money and I'm gonna turn in the biography and they're gonna say, but what, that's it? And so they're gonna want me to sort of spice it up with stories about other people. I'm not gonna do that. So in, in a sort of a tongue in cheek way, you know, um, here I am writing this sort of spiritual biography, which is trampolines off of the last conversations we had the good fortune to have over the last few weeks of her life. And, um, and so I created this sort of secret, which I mean, we all have sadness, you know, and we all have, and of course she was, a, she was not depressed, she was a joyful person, but it's true, she felt a sadness at the time. She felt sadness when her father left. She felt a sadness because of the war. And ultimately she felt incredibly betrayed, you know, in the last five years of her life after from the world that, you know, and the UN and this is never, after World War II, this is never gonna happen again. And here she is propelled, you know, uh, uh, 50 years later in a camp in Somalia. Well, have the capacity to solve the situation. It's just, a, it's not a lack of means, it's a lack of, of will. That, that has created these tragedies. Why? Because we haven't invested in the education and empowering these people to help themselves. Rather, we've sort of, you know, continued on this, this hand to mouth, which she hated, but there was no, at the time, that's the only role she could play. 